Hi, this is Candy Johnson. I am your host, and this is Real Talk, brought to you by Real Raw Records. Today, I posted something on my timeline. It was just a comment of the fact that um, some people have gotten so um, to the point where they love old school music that um, they don't allow uh, themselves room to um, find other artists and appreciate new artists. Now, uh, I want to thank Meek. I hope I pr I'm pronouncing his name right. But I want to thank Meek for bringing this to my attention, um, we were discussing a different matter and and that sub in the subject evolved to that. So we're going to title this session Music Memories. Music memories are awesome. I depend on music memories to market my music. Okay, and I'll explain thoroughly what I mean by that. And anyone is welcome to come in and interject and uh, give your uh, view on this topic. And the topic is music memories and how they relate to um, fans and the music industry uh, today. All right. Now, the comment that was made is that this person was uh, expressing that uh, they prefer listening to old school music because it's more smoother and um, uh, they said they can listen to it for long periods of time. All right. And I want to say that I thoroughly understand and I feel you, okay? <laughs> and that is because that is the whole reason I chose to get into the music industry as an artist and as a contributor to the music industry. Hi, John. Thanks for watching. Hi, Claudine. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to uh, contribute to the topic, you are welcome to um, comment and let me know that, and I'll tap you all in. I think I can select the invite button and allow you all to also be aired and uh, speak your uh, mind or your views on this topic. You are welcome to do so. So, as I was saying, um, I have um, a great interest in um, restoring the quality back into the music. Um, and also, along with restoring the quality back in the music, I have a passion for uh, building a whole system to recognize artists for their contributions, those that are natural artists and those that are very skillful and um, good at what they do. No, Claudine, I don't speak French. I wish I did. I do uh, write songs and... I am writing in the process of writing a whole album that will consist of songs that I sing in other languages. Yes. So um, I would love to learn French flu fluently. Absolutely. Uh, because I think music is a universal language, but I also think it behooves some of us so-called export artist to cross over the language barrier 
and not just force people to listen to our music in our language. So um, I am very interested in um, pursuing that avenue. So I, I have a whole album that's uh, in what I'll, I call uh, <laughs> an international album. All right. And it's an international album because it's going to be full of songs of different languages from different countries, different regions. And so I'm going to be attempting to um, extract culture from different people and portray that within the song of my translation of what I feel from other uh, languages and their music style. So um, it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, as far as music, thank you, love. Uh, Claudine, I appreciate you. Um, as far as old artists are concerned, I think that the ingredient that is missing from this new age of artistry is not the artist's fault, okay? A lot of people blame the artist uh, and just say that that we are not making good music, but that is not the truth. The truth is, is that a lot of people have gotten to the point of being indifferent about music. So what they do is they'll, they have already set in their mind that they love the old artists that they used to like or whatever like that. And they're just not accepting of new music. And they're forgetting the fact that those same artists that you love right now today are the same artists during their time that were contradicted and uh, said that, that, oh, we don't want this new music y'all got going on. And they had to break the ice. <laughs> they had to break the ice too in their time. And now... You're accepting it as good music. But please believe and understand, if you know, want to know anything truthful about the music industry, is that anytime you inject something new, there's going to be rejection. Hey, that's right. Absolutely. So... I wanted to point out the fact that I understand... Uh, uh, people say, are saying that I love music, but you're going to have to give me some good music. All right. Now, I feel you on that. I'm the same way. My whole philosophy as an artist is if it ain't got funk, it don't fit. And if you ain't going to do it right, then you need to quit. And I have been uh, considered as arrogant and stubborn and mean, all kinds of negative uh, connotations that people are attached to me, keeping it real with them. When I tell them, okay, your music is trash, I listen to all your music and you need, you. need this is not your line of work. I will tell a person that, that directly, all right, um, because... The reason I do that so strongly is not to be rude to that person, but to help them understand that if you are spending a lot of time on something that's not your destiny, then that's the less time you're spending on something that is your purpose and your destiny in life. Ain't that right? Um, But then you have the aspect of people blaming the artist for bad music when they don't understand and know that the record labels are in control of the radio stations, all right? So what you hearing is not what we putting out. It's what they putting out, okay? And these are people that don't give a damn about music, all right? They don't give a damn about music. They can't possibly give a damn about music 
and push the trash that they push it, you know. I ain't trying to be judgmental or nothing like that there, but everybody know what I'm talking about. This mainstream mu music is trash, you know, and, and a lot of people are complaining about it on uh, everywhere, but it's being ignored because some people are either just compliant and go along with the trash that's being put out because they just want to be a part part of the new trends and the new fads and stuff like that and then you have so many artists that are trying to be independent and don't support each other see what y'all don't understand is a lot of artists supported each other back in the day too a lot of artists supported each other and had each other on on their gigs and and gave each other props uh for uh their talent and their gifts uh when i seen a little argument between Diana Ross and Patty LaBelle that was supposed to be a little uh, uh controversy going on between them two and they divas I was so upset about that because I don't like seeing that. I love seeing two divas loving and appreciating one another. That's what I like to see. You don't have to be gay women to appreciate other women talent and their little style or whatever they got going on. Their little, you know, beauty snapshots or whatever like that. You don't have to be gay to like they post and give them they props if they rocking it that day. All right. And if they rocking it every day, they definitely deserve some props for that. Okay. Because that means they on they G shit. All right. So this whole broadcast is, is just about creativity in general. Uh, but most importantly, I want to discuss music memories because um, I make my music uh, in a way that it is old school style, but with a new school flavor, all right? And I've had, I've even had a lot of people to say, oh, I know that song. But they don't know it because I just, I just, I just, I just made it up piece by piece. And because that's how I make my songs, piece by piece. Um, sometimes I just sang out a melody and then put words to it. But however I come up with the whole package of producing music, I make it piece by piece. So they absolutely have not ever heard it before. I don't use other people's samples. I don't use, uh um, what do you call those? Um, I just don't use samples and I don't use auto tunes. I don't use, um, what do you call a lot of effects? Um, I do use some effects, but what I do when I produce music and doing recordings of music is I take it easy on that, on them effects. And the reason why I take it easy on applying effects is because I do not want it to sound unnatural. I want it to be an effect. If I place an effect on it, an effect that naturally that type of sound, you can get that type of sound naturally. Say for example, a sound of an echo, you can naturally get a sound of an echo in a bathroom or in a, a you know, a closed room with you no know, empty room. So, uh, or uh, in a cave or what have you. So those to me are natural, what I call natural effects. Even the wiggling of the voice, all right, is natural because if you remember when we was kids and you had a fan and you used to uh, holler or scream inside the fan or talk inside the fan and it made your voice tremble when it came back out. So to me, that's still, you know, uh, a natural effect. So what I try to do with effects is 
uh, imitate something that I know is more natural if I use effects, okay? Um, but I do use a lot of natural sounds. Uh, in my song, Addicted, I use on the uh, part of the song, I also have sound effects within my song. So on Addicted, uh, there's a part in the song that says, uh, when trouble comes around, I'll tell it, keep on walking. And um, we re at the School of Rock, we record, I told them, I didn't want no fake sound effects of footsteps. I wanted real footsteps. So we actually used my shoes, <laughs> my shoe clocking shoes in, <laughs> in, in that song, okay? Because when I say I'm old school, I go, I'm going all the way back with it when when they used to make movies and, and they used to actually have people that created the sound effects for whatever sound effects was included in that um, production. So I make, um, I produce what they call, well, I call, because I don't make this up, uh, what they call cinema music, okay? And... I call it cinema music because I make music for the movies and not particularly for radio play. Um, a lot of artists don't even know that there's a difference between music uh, that is um, made for radio play and music that is made for movie soundtracks. Now, the difference between the two is you can play music made for the radio on movies, but it wouldn't be wise or good marketing, marketing strategy to play uh, music that's made for the movies on the radio. You would have to alter it um, and, and change how it's coming out because it's a different type of uh, feel when you're watching something and you have that visual along with it than if you're listening to music um, via the radio. Your receptive uh, qualities are different. Now, I don't want to get too technical when it comes down to how music um, is Play, that's called music placement, but I would like to say, I'd like to get y'all opinion about this. Do y'all really think about uh, music in the aspect of wanting to know new artists? Because the music industry has blocked out the good artists, all right? in the mainstream so the only way that people hear music is through the radio so y'all a lot of people who are fans of music and love music and are music connoisseurs y'all making a broad statement in the presumption that there are no good artists out here when the real truth of the matter is that the good artists are just not being uh, promoted or um, picked up, all right? So that's the reason that you don't hear them on the radio because they are not a part of that label that own that radio, okay? Or they don't have sufficient enough budget or backing to uh, pay for placement on the radio, all right? Because that's what artists have to do to get heard a lot of times all right so the big radio stations of radio record labels are able to push their artists and not have to pay for it because they own the radio stations so spread the word y'all need to share this because a lot of people don't know this and they talking uh, without knowledge of this fact uh, when they speak and have opinions and such concerning the music industry, all right? 
uh, there are a lot of good artists out there, amazing artists. What we need to do is to support, uh, start looking for new artists, you know. If you really want to know uh, what's going on in the music industry and what kind of music and flavor is out there, you, you can't be going on these celebrity pages. You got to go on the nobody pages, you know. You have to come here the down here where the real people at if you want some real shit, okay? That's how that works. Um, hi, uh, Wanderson. Uh, some more people that came in. I'm sorry. Uh, John, appreciate you watching. Uh, Ray, appreciate you watching. I was trying to figure out how to, how you pronounce your name. Hi, Anthony. Appreciate you watching. We just having a little real talk about the music. This is a Music is Magic on Air broadcast about music and memories. Um, and I know music draw people memory. Um, and you start thinking about different um, good times and stuff or Whatever your situation was like when that song came out and, and music make it go back, you know. And, you know, everybody got that in their relationship, that song that remind them of when they was uh, first met or when they, they was real deeply in love with each other and stuff like that. And it's awesome to have those kind of memories, okay? But those of us who were fortunate enough to be born in a time where there was some good artists and, and, and during the time when the record labels, when Atlantic Records uh, first hit the scene with all them good artists just wrecking just wrecking the music industry, but they got bought out, all right, so they ain't, they ain't Atlantic no more, that's, uh, you know, so since they had got bought out, um, they was the main ones, them sax records, and, and, you know, and all these different legendary companies, I think Sun Records and uh, what they got uh, down there and Muscle Shoals and all the good record labels that were owned and operated by people who love, 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 love music. I know uh, about uh, the owners of Atlantic Records. Y'all got to watch the uh, documentary. Uh, it's it's beautiful. It was very very well uh, produced. Uh, that it's called Muscle Shows, I think. And um, wow, they was wrecking over there, wrecking back to back hits. Um, and it was hit worthy songs. That's that's the thing, you know, you got hits, they call hits. Um, but really they not hits. Um they just trash on a list that's made up uh and don't include no real artists. Let me tell you something, if you in a contest and the people that own the contest got people in the contest, guess who's gonna win the contest? So anyway, back at the radio. <laughs> so uh, anyway, back at the rant, we was talking about music and memories. But I remember people that was on the top of the charts was people that deserved to be there for the most part. Of course, they had hoopla going on back then too. Let's not get to the point where we over romanticized the past. We had some bullshit going on back then too. 
black people weren't even allowed to play in some places, all right? So it was a lot of very awesome artists that didn't get heard, all right? But at the same time, during those years of, of the best of music that was put out, I think, um, back in the 70s, uh, 70s through the 90s, I would say. During those years, the awesome thing about that was that it was an acceptance of the fact, um, matter of fact, I think it was some company that was refusing uh, black music being played on radio, and they realized that their business went down. Uh, was down and everybody else's that was allowing black people music on their radio, their business was booming. So uh, they accepted us even though they didn't want to accept us because the proof was in the profits, you dig? All right. Now, nowadays that uh, these big industry leaders, they own everything uh, the, the, the TV stations, the radio stations, the magazines, and any other type of publishing media. So, and gaming and all of that. So now they don't have to produce good music because they can, they have the control over everything that make the money with the music. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a take it or leave it type of situation. Um, realistically, it's a take it or leave it type situation. The consumers are not exacting the power that they have by saying we're not going to buy this trash. Um, the consumers are conforming and just going along with the hoopla. Um, now it is some people that says they, that they don't want to go along with the hoopla and they stick into their old school uh, music and stuff like that. But uh, if them artists are dead, that means that you are not helping any artists that are alive, really. Because um, a lot of the artists that we love the most are, not, are no longer with us. Um there are many of them that are still alive and popping, but I think we should pay tribute to them uh, and their struggles in the industry by supporting the new artists that are coming out and trying to come up uh, maybe with similar style of music, but original in their uh, art, you know. Don't try to make us new artists be like the old people, you know. Uh, what I'm saying is accept us for the creative people that we are, ourselves, you know. Um, that's wrong to try to make somebody uh, be somebody else. I wrote a song, it's a country song that say, um, I shouldn't have to be somebody else to be loved for who I am. And that's just real talk, man. Hi, Anthony. How you doing, sweetheart? Appreciate you watching. I thank you all for watching. I think we're going to end this broadcast. Oh, Shucky, we got Lu Louis or Louise in the house. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. I appreciate you watching. We're just talking about uh, the music industry and as it relates to everyday life as far as music memories. And so uh, we're doing some legendary things over at Real Raw Records. So what? We're doing some things that's history in the making. Everybody want to jump in on the bandwagon when our artists make it famous and when they make it big and when they breach all the bullshit in the industry and then they're like oh you the shit you the shit like prince prince went through hell now oh, everybody claiming they love prince but them same people that's claiming they love prince 
gave him hell in the beginning. Laughed at him, talked about him, blackballed him out the music industry because he wasn't willing to, he didn't want to be like everybody else. That's why his music was so awesome. And he would not accept people trying to change his style. And he said, hey, if you don't like my style, then too bad for you because I'm finna rock my shit. You dig? And he did that. And then what happened? Everybody um uh, turned on him and stuff like that. Okay. But he stuck with it. He was consistent. And he was confident that uh, what he was bringing was good shit. His style, his music, his artistry, the whole nine yards, all right? And then, finally, people caught on and people realized, you know, little by little. So don't be discouraged just because people are not accepting of what you have to offer as an artist. I don't. I don't listen to people because I have had so many experiences where people talk against something and then it wound up being um, very lucrative and productive. Um, I'll talk about that <laughs> um, in another one of my uh, sessions on the app to success called uh, Strictly Business um, is the hot topic. Strictly Business, and I'll explain to you all how I came up literally from nothing many times, but I did that by, by ig ignoring people, uh, naysayers, uh, people that say, well, it don't look like nothing happening. Uh, look at you, you homeless. Look at you, you, you down is basically what they saying. Oh, you talking all that big stuff about what you're going to have and what you got and uh, what you're going to get or whatever like that. And I ignored them because I knew what I could do because I had done it before. I have been hit rock bottom uh, several times in life, but I've also uh, reached some high peaks in, um, in my endeavors that showed the proof that I have the ability to um, produce what I say I'm going to produce. Uh, and I've tried a lot of different things, okay? And most of the things that I put my hands to are very prosperous. But I was just seeking for my purpose in life in those things. So I lost interest in some of those things. It wasn't that they wasn't producing. I just lost interest in it after I, you know, extracted as much as I could from that sauce. So I've sold cars. I've had a daycare. I've done some of everything. All right. You want to talk about memories, doing all the experiences that, uh, that I've had in life of failures and successes. I wrote a song called uh, Provocative Praise. And I wrote that song because I was trying to express to some Christians that I don't have to be a Christian to be thankful, to show my appreciation for... Um, the many blessings that I have received and um, lived uh, out um, just an extraordinary life. And I'm thankful for that. So why I got to be a Christian to be appreciative of um, blessings or good things in my life and my experiences and such. So um, in that song, it talks about the fact that um, he says that, um, trust and act like you know him and he will prosper what you do with your hands. And what I was saying in that, uh, lyric is that 
when you trust in what's right, you'll prosper, you know? Um, so I want to encourage all the artists out there to not be religious, but be right. Just be right, you know? Uh, and let's make some music memories.